Hey there. So now I'm going to get started talking about um, kind of frequency domain analyses. Uh, one of the most common ways you may have heard about this is in terms of spectral decomposition. And so I'm just going to kind of go through roughly what the concept is. And then uh, later on in the next module, we're going to look at all different depositional settings where, where you will see it being used a lot more often. OK, so getting started. Um, in seismic data, when we do spectral decomposition, it's very similar <laughs> to what we're doing with a prism and light. So light's a wave, uh, seismic energy is a wave, so we can break it up into its different components. And so this is kind of a neat image here because we've got our input seismic data and we can break it up and look at the low frequency spectrum, uh, middle frequencies, and even the high frequencies. And we can get different information out of each of those. And I've shown some examples of this already in previous lectures. And so spectral decomposition is kind of the classic way that we think about this. And so um, what we do is we take information from a couple of different frequencies and we combine them using a red, green, blue blending. Uh, there's a lot of different ways we can calculate spectral decomposition. Um, some of the more popular ones are the short window Fourier transform, a continuous wavelet transform, and matching per <laughs> marching pursuit decomposition. And I'll show you a side-by-side -side comparison of all of these later on in a few slides. And so what we get is if you think about uh, seismic frequency and and seismic time, when you're looking at higher frequencies, you're imaging thinner beds. Um, when you're looking at uh, lower frequencies, you're imaging thicker beds. And so this is a pretty cool uh, example, I think, of showing how look, with the lower frequencies, you can see the thicker parts of the channel at uh, 15 hertz, because um, they'll be tuning at that, hertz, at that <laughs> frequency and you'll be seeing the thinner parts of the channel at the higher frequencies. And so that's kind of how it's working um, kind of in a holist holistic sense for channels. Um, you can look at these one by one or side by side. So this is an example of looking at, um, let's see, uh, the highest kind of amplitude from different frequency ranges for different, for the same channel at different frequencies. And so we've got here an amplitude map where we're looking at the low, the, the middle frequencies, and then also uh, the higher frequencies. And so the higher frequencies in C, we're kind of seeing the flanks of the channel, higher frequencies thinner. Lower frequencies, we're kind of seeing the thicker parts. So if you're looking at channels for reservoir systems, you may want to um, understand where they're thinner and, and thicker in terms of reserves calculations. So this is uh, going back to, to the example before. This is how we do that red, green, blue blending is we map the 40 hertz portion of the spectrum um, in a blue color. In this example, you could choose any frequency combinations you want. Uh, 50 hertz in green and 60 hertz are the thinnest portions in red. And so when we combine them, we get an image like this one on the right hand side. And so we can notice which portions are thicker because they appear bluer in color. Um, and the thinner ones appear a little bit redder in color, and you can see them along some of the edges. Other ways that we look at um, the, the spectrum and the, the frequency aspects of the seismic um, is with a few other uh, attributes. One of them is peak frequency, which shows us the peak frequency. <laughs> um, so in this case, uh, the mode of the frequency spectrum. Um, peak magnitude, so where it's the high, like how high is it? Um, and then also the bandwidth, right? So let's look at what those look like in seismic. So here's the peak spectral frequency, so the peak frequency of the data, and we can see how it changes in different parts of the spectrum. Um, so we've got lower frequencies kind of tuning in certain areas, and this is that Great South Basin data set um, that I was showing before. So we've got some of those faults over here. <laughs> so we can see the, the lower peak frequencies, we could see some of the higher ones over in this region. Um, here we've got the peak spectral magnitude, so how high is the magnitude? Um, again, kind of seeing areas where the magnitude's a little bit higher and where it's a little bit lower. And then here we've got the co-rendered peak spectral frequency and peak spectral magnitude all together. So the areas with the highest magnitude are more um, translucent, and so we can see the colors really shine through. 
So in this case where we have the higher magnitude, we can see those lower, I don't know, 30, uh, 30 40 hertz or so <laughs> um, peak spectral frequency in that region. And then we can see the higher ones over here. So we have some sort of thin bed there that's tuning. Um, in this case, we've taken a third attribute, so coherence, and we've added that on top, um, which creates a, a really interesting visualization that we could spend a lot of time interpreting. Um, we've also, so now, in addition to seeing the areas where we have the peak spectral magnitude, because they're kind of brighter in terms of color, we can also see the areas that are, are faulted and fractured. Um, here it looks like we almost maybe have some sediment waves, um, if, if I'm remembering correctly. Okay, and so like I mentioned, there's a lot of different spectral decomposition um, algorithms. So I had mentioned before short time window 4A transform. Uh, we've got a continuous wavelet transform matching pursuit. Um, there's also constrained least squares, <laughs> spectral analyses, and spectral probes. So I'm just going to show a comparison of a few of those. Um, so here's an example um, of the short window. Um, discrete Fourier transform, the continuous wavelet transform, and then matching pursuit. And so what we've got here is a very large channel complex system that we're looking at in vertical section. And so we can see a lot more um, clear delineation in the matching pursuit algorithm, which of course <laughs> takes a lot more time to run um, <laughs> computationally. Um, but we can see uh, more uh, thinner beds. We've got that higher kind of temporal resolution in this case. And when we look at it in, um, in map view, uh, what we can notice is that with the short, uh, <laughs> the, um, the, the short waveform Fourier transform and the continuous wave, wavelet transform, um, it's always a mouthful, <laughs> you actually get a little bit of bleeding in um, from that vertical smearing from other um, iterations of the channel, so other evolutions of the channel. And so let me just go back here really quick. So you notice how it's a lot uh, blurrier. You've, you've lost some of that vertical resolution in the short window uh, transform in the continuous wavelet. Um, so what you're doing is you're actually blending in a little bit um, aspects of the channel that happened, uh, you know, before or after the time you're looking at. And so you're getting that, that kind of temporal bleeding. And so you can see some Im images of that. Hold on, I've got some arrows um, that'll point them out. And so here we're kind of zooming in uh, to this upper part. And so you can see this kind of oxbow from a channel that's essentially lying on another time slice in the seismic volume. And then same thing down here, another kind of evolution of that channel that's not on this main horizon we want to be looking at, but rather bleeding in. And you don't see that in the matching pursuit algorithm. So to kind of wrap up this really, really quick summary of spectral decomposition and frequency analyses, um, just keep in mind that the way these work is that you can use the, the tuning phenomena at different frequencies to help you see the, the relative thickness of different aspects of your lithology. And it's really great in channels. That's kind of our classic case. Um, you can help delineate faults also, and you can use like your peak spectral frequency to help um, represent some of the seismic spectral response that you've got overall in a larger scale. So as always, thank you very much for listening.